What's the role of play in nurturing young minds? That's what we're going to explore in this week's episode of Pookie Ponders. Let's dive straight in. Play. It is far more than just fun and games. It's a powerful tool that enriches various aspects of a child's growth, from cognitive development and emotional regulation skills to social skills, physical development and language proficiency. In this episode of the podcast, I'm going to explore how play serves as a catalyst for each of these vital domains and provide you with some practical ideas for incorporating play-based learning into your daily routines. Let's start with cognitive development. So play is a powerful tool for enhancing cognitive development, the development of thinking in children. It stimulates their brains, it encourages curiosity, and it nurtures problem-solving skills and creativity. So there are lots of different ways that we can use play to put this into practice and really help with that cognitive development. So for example, puzzle play. We can provide children with age-appropriate puzzles that challenge their problem-solving abilities. We can gradually increase the complexity of puzzles as they improve. Next, building with blocks. We can encourage children to construct structures using building blocks. This will foster their spatial reasoning and creativity as they experiment with different designs. Next, think about storytelling and pretend play. So engaging children in storytelling and really imaginative play will encourage them to create stories, characters and scenarios, which which is going to really promote that creativity and narrative thinking. The fourth idea here in cognitive development is science experiments. So conducting simple science experiments at home or in the classroom, such as creating a volcano with baking soda and vinegar, is a hands-on learning experience that's going to really encourage scientific thinking and get kids really buying into that sort of little professor exploring the world type of thing too. Um, And then finally, board games and strategy games. So playing board games or games with strategy that require planning, critical thinking and decision making. And this can include like online kind of gaming. um, This will boost cognitive skills whilst the child is having a lot of fun. Next, let's have a dive into emotional regulation and the power of play when it comes to supporting the development of emotional regulation. So play can be a safe space for children to explore and regulate their emotions. It can help them to express their feelings and learn to manage those feelings constructively as well. So how can we put this into practice? So idea number one is emotion focused art. If we provide art supplies and encourage children to create artwork that represents how they feel feel, this can allow them to express themselves visually. Remember when doing this kind of work, it's about the process, not the product. If the child wants to talk to you about the product, that's fantastic, but it's about how we get there that really matters. Next, feelings charades, playing a game of charades where children act out different emotions. This can help them to both identify and to understand different feelings. Number three is emotion-themed storybooks. So reading books that explore different emotions and discuss the character's feelings. You can encourage children as you explore these books together to relate these emotions and these feelings to their own experiences. Next, calm down corner. Love a calm down corner. So you could create a designated calm down area, corner, nook, niche with various soothing activities like coloring books or stress balls or like calming sensory toys. You can teach the children to use this space when they feel the need to self-regulate. So they begin to build that link that they're able to change how they feel sometimes when they need things to begin to calm. They can start to learn to regulate. And then final idea in this section on emotional regulation is emotion cards. So you could create cards with pictures of different facial expressions or use existing cards like chatties, C-H-A-T-E-E-Z, which are amazing and I use them all the time. You can buy them. So these um, cards with different facial uh, expressions are going to represent different feelings and emotions. You can then ask children to pick a card and share a time when they felt that emotion, promoting emotional awareness and communication skills. How can play help with social skills? 
that's what we're going to think about now. So so this is a bit of a like boom, boom, boom kind of an episode, but hopefully you take some ideas away from it. So social skills. Play is a really natural way for our kids to develop their social skills. It teaches cooperation. It teaches negotiation. It teaches empathy. It's just essential really for developing all that we need in terms of healthy relationships. So what can we do to encourage and nurture this? First of all, role-playing scenarios. So engaging in role-playing activities where children take on different roles and practice social interactions such as sharing or taking turns or resolving conflicts. You can practice all sorts of things through these role-playing scenarios. Another thing that you can do to develop social skills through play um, is collaborative art projects. So you could encourage group art projects where children are going to work together to create a piece of art. And this is going to promote their teamwork and their communication. And I'm sure they'll have a whole bunch of fun along the way as well. Next idea is team sports. Not for everyone, but for some kids, it works really, really well. So organizing like outdoor or indoor team sports and games where children will learn to cooperate, strategize and support each other. Just a slight aside here, just think really carefully about when engaging some of our children in team sports, if this is something that feels really uncomfortable for them or we see that emotional regulation becomes really poor, she says, with very challenging flashbacks to having to go and pick her own children out of PE and sports lessons many times while they were still trying to go to school. Just be aware that, you know, for some kids, it's it's not always something that is really brilliant for them right now and might require uh, quite good boundaries or some more skills to be learned or just perhaps to do something different. But for some kids, team sports, absolutely brilliant way of developing these skills. Number four here is sharing circles. So holding regular sharing circles where children would take turns sharing their thoughts, their feelings, their experiences and fostering kind of active listening and empathy. Number five is cooking together. So involving children in cooking or baking type activities. Um, This is collaborative and can encourage following instructions, teamwork, sharing and so on when we kind of bake together. And you can make this even more fun for some kids by, uh, especially if they're a little bit older, um, doing things like thinking about creating videos for social media. So my girls love to create TikToks of recipes that they're creating and they might do this together as well. So promoting all those same skills, but in a mode that feels like accessible and fun and cool to them right now. How about play for a physical development? So play is essential for developing those fine and gross motor skills that our children so need. It's going to enhance their coordination. It's going to enhance their balance and it's going to enhance their strength. So how can we put this into practice? Um, Obstacle courses create indoor or outdoor obstacle courses with challenges like crawling under tables or jumping over cushions or balancing on a line. This is going to promote their physical coordination and you'll have a right giggle doing it. Sensory play. Fill a bin with sensory materials like rice or sand or water and children can scoop and pour and manipulate these materials which is going to enhance their fine motor skills and feel lovely as well. (laughs) Nature walks. You could go and explore nature with children through nature walks. This is going to encourage physical activity, getting outdoors and it's going to provide opportunities for gross motor development too. You might even let them climb a tree. It depends on what your role is and what health and safety says about that. But we have a lot of fun climbing trees in our house. And this is certainly great sort of safe risk taking behavior for our children and absolutely brilliant for developing those motor skills. When we're kind of climbing in a real life situation like that, it feels both fun and compelling and exciting. And we get really like in the flow of the activity and it can really help with those climbing skills. As an amusing aside here. So I climb, many of you will know this if you watch me on social media and so on. And I get loads of comments on my uh, climbing, uh, how uh, graceful I look and how coordinated I look. And I've worked really hard uh, on this in my bouldering. However, when I'm walking around in day-to-day life, I bump into stuff all the time. Um, And I think this is an interesting thing and there's all sorts going on. My friend Neris would tell me all about my vestibular system and why this is, but it's something we see with our children as well. And actually really engaging them with an activity where they're like really there, they're in the flow, they're really doing the thing, can really help with that development of proprioception and interoception, like 
understanding where our body is in the world and beginning to really feel it and connect with it and being able to engage better with those motor skills. So getting them really into an activity can make a big difference with developing those skills. Okay, next, dance parties. You could have dance parties where children can move to music, which is going to improve their balance and coordination while, again, having fun. Having fun is a very key part of all of this. Or yoga for kids. So introducing simple yoga poses and stretches designed for children. Um, yoga is going to enhance their flexibility and improve that kind of body awareness that we mentioned before. Um, there are some great channels out there um, on yoga for kids. And as kids are getting a little bit older, then um, yoga Yoga with Adrienne, which is a perennial favourite. I know of many of you out there, whenever I mention Adrienne and Benji, her dog, um, then there tend to be some whoops and cheers and hey uh in the, in the crowd out there. So yeah, have a think about yoga with Adrienne for older children as well. So again, Ellie, my daughter, who's currently 13, has just got into this and it's proving really brilliant for her, building her strength, building her coordination, but also really good in terms of sensory regulation as well. She uses uses it to calm her anxiety as part of her daily routine now, which is fantastic. And finally, thinking about language development and the role of play and language development. So play is a really rich source of language development. This is where we can end up doing learning without realising we're doing learning because we're just having fun. But the learning is happening whilst the fun is going on. This is just the joy and the magic of play. So it's going to expose children to new words potentially and encourage conversation and just generally enhance their vocabulary in a really low state stakes, low pressure, low demand kind of environment. So how do we put this into practice? Storytelling with props. You could provide props like puppets or figurines and encourage children to create stories or scenes and prompt verbal communication and storytelling in that way. You could try a scavenger hunt, so organising indoor or outdoor scavenger hunts with clues and riddles. This activity is going to require children to communicate and collaborate as they search for hidden items, and they love this. And again, with our slightly older kids, we can be thinking about how we turn this into a like shareable type of event. Makes for great TikToks, etc. So they might enjoy filming it and sharing it back. Word games, playing games like I Spy or 20 Questions to stimulate conversation and expand the vocabulary. Um, cooking and baking narratives. So we love a bit of cooking and baking. So I'll come back to this again, but involving children in cooking or baking and asking them to describe the steps or the ingredients that they're using um, can promote language development. And again, this is where making those videos, making the TikTok of the recipe. So we need to describe the instructions so our audience knows how to copy our amazing recipe can again help to develop those skills. And then finally, rhyming games. Engaging in rhyming games where children come up with words that rhyme with a given word um, it can foster phonemic awareness and creativity. Okay, so that was quite the brain dump, the whistle stop tour of many different things that you can perhaps try. And I'm sure you have loads of your own to add as well. But we explored the multifaceted importance of play in child development. We delved into its role in enhancing cognitive development, emotional regulation, social skills, physical growth, and language proficiency. We had a look at some practical ideas for incorporating play based learning into your day to day routines or in your classroom. Um, and hopefully, there are ideas here that parents or teachers or other professionals, anyone really who's passionate about nurturing the holistic development of children and young people could take away. Um, as we wrap up this episode, just remember play. It's not just a source of amusement, though that is great. It is a powerful tool for shaping well-rounded individuals who are curious, who are emotionally resilient, socially adept, physically capable and verbally proficient. By embracing the value of play and really appreciating its importance, we can empower our next generation to thrive in a dynamic world filled with endless opportunities for growth and discovery. And if we engage in that play alongside them, we'll have a lot of fun along the way as well. As well as building bonds and nurturing and connecting and oh so much. Play is amazing. 
I hope there were some helpful ideas in here for you. If you liked what you heard today, please subscribe and share my work. You can support my work further by joining me over on Patreon, where you get early access to all of my resources and a chance to influence what I work on next. Or you can invite me to speak at your next event or in your setting, either virtually or face to face. Thank you so much for listening and for everything you are doing for the children and young people in your care. This has been Pookie Ponders with me, Pookie Knightsmith. Until next time, stay curious, stay compassionate and keep pondering. Over 